In this video, we're going to take a look at the cell surface area to volume ratio and the limitations this has on cell size. The volume of the cell consists of the internal regions of the cell. Inside the cell, there are a multitude of metabolic reactions occurring which require the acquisition of gases and chemicals as well as producing waste. The surface area of the cell is determined by the cell membrane. This cell membrane is responsible for regulating the movement of molecules into and out of the cell. Gases and other molecules have to move through the cell membrane into the cell, and waste products have to move through the cell membrane to be eliminated from the cell. Surface area, volume, and the surface area to volume ratio can be easily calculated using a cube as a model. Let's look at a cube with a side length of 1 cm. The volume of this cube is going to be all the three-dimensional space the cube takes up. To work out the volume of a cube, you times the height by the width by the length. So for this cube, it would be 1 cm by 1 cm by 1 cm, which is the same as saying the volume is 1 cm cubed. The surface area of this cube is the total area that all the faces of the cube make. If we were to deconstruct the cube, we can see that it is made up of six sides. The area of each can be calculated by timesing the height by the width, so 1 cm by 1 cm or 1 cm squared. To get the area of the whole cube, you would then times this by the number of sides. There are six sides, so it would be 6 times 1 cm squared, giving a surface area of 6 cm squared. To calculate the surface area to volume ratio, you divide the surface area by the volume. The volume for this cube was 1 cm cubed and the surface area was 6 cm squared. So for this cube, we would divide 6 cm squared by 1 cm cubed, which equals 6 cm to the power of negative 1. The surface area to volume ratio gets smaller the bigger the cube gets. If the cube had a side length of 2 cm, the volume would be 2 cm by 2 cm by 2 cm, which equals 8 cm cubed. The surface area would be 2 cm by 2 cm by the 6 sides, which equals 24 cm squared. The surface area would be 24 cm squared divided by 8 cm cubed, which equals 3 cm to the power of negative 1, which is smaller than the surface area for the smaller cube. If instead of a bigger cube there were 8 smaller 1 cm length cubes, the volume would be the same as the larger cube. 1 cm cubed times 8 cubes equals 8 cm cubed total volume for all the smaller cubes. The surface area would be higher though. 6 cm squared times 8 equals 48 cm squared total surface area for the smaller cubes compared to the 24 cm squared for the larger single cube. This gives us a higher surface area to volume ratio also. 48 cm squared divided by 8 cm cubed equals 6 cm to the power of negative 1, which is the same ratio as you get with one single smaller cube. Cubes are often used as a model for looking at the surface area and volume of a cell. The benefit of using cubes as a model is that they are easy to visualize, measure, and manipulate whereas real cells are hard to visualize, measure, and manipulate due to their microscopic size as well as coming in different shapes. The limitation of using cubes as a model is that cells are mostly not cubic. The size of the cell affects the surface area to volume ratio. As seen in the model of the cubes, as the cell gets bigger, the volume increases inside. The surface area also gets bigger, but the surface area to volume ratio gets smaller. Cells are often limited in size by the surface area to volume ratio. When the cell is small, it has a larger surface area to volume ratio. It has a smaller volume, so needs less molecules to be transported into the cell through the membrane for metabolic processes, and there is also less waste to be removed through the cell membrane. At the same time, there is more cell membrane relative to volume for this movement across the membrane to occur. In smaller cells, the molecules have to diffuse through a shorter distance within the cell. When the cells are larger, they have a smaller surface area to volume ratio. 
The volume is larger and has a higher need for molecular nutrients to move across the membrane into the cell, and more need for the removal of waste across the cell membrane. At the same time, there is less cell membrane relative to the volume for this to occur, and in the cell these molecules have a larger distance in which to diffuse. This limits the cells if the metabolic rate exceeds the rate of the exchange of the materials needed in metabolism and the removal of waste, the cell will die in time. This is why growing cells often divide via mitosis or binary fission to remain small and be able to have a high enough surface area to volume ratio to enable survival of the cell. Cells are varied in shape, some are adapted to increase the surface area and the surface area to volume ratio. One type of adaptation of a cell to maximize the surface area to volume ratio is by forming long extensions, which increase the surface area of the cell and in turn the surface area to volume ratio. This is seen in nerve cells, where the cell has many thin extensions branching out from the cell body called dendrites. A second type of adaptation of a cell to maximize the surface area to volume ratio is by being thin and flat, as this increases the surface area to volume ratio. This is seen in red blood cells, which are flattened into a biconcave shape. A third type of adaptation of a cell to maximize the surface area to volume ratio is by having bristle-like extensions called microvilli, as they increase the total membrane surface of the cell increasing the surface area to volume ratio. This is seen in cells in the intestine. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe and hit that like button.